Hello and welcome to Blij dat ik brei, my little YouTube show about knitting and yarn, mostly. Uh, my name is Nanya and you can also find me on the internet as the knitting therapist um, on Instagram or YouTube. And on Ravelry, I am Nanya H. I make this these videos about once every month and I've been doing this for over a year now. Last video was was actually my uh, podiversary as it's called. I enjoy making this video podcast a lot and, and I'm very happy that I have an audience to share my knitting endeavors with. So thank you for watching, thank you for coming back or tuning in for the first time. I hope you enjoy yourself. My podcast is divided into three sections. The first one is the past, where I show you things that I made in the past. Then the present, and uh, I show you things I've recently finished or things uh, that I've just cast on. And then the future, that is like dream knitting, things I want to knit, things I plan to knit, and... Uh, yeah, acquisitions can also be incorporated in that because buying yarn is great, but I don't like to do it if I don't have a plan with the yarn. It doesn't have, mean that you actually do the thing you plan to do with it, but you know, I like to at least have a plan. Um, the past weeks I have been knitting quite a lot, so I have some things to show you. Last time I, I spoke about uh, all the things that I made and that I needed to mend. Um, so I've done some of that and uh, I have finished two of my works in progress. I cast on something new and I also have one more Stephen West show that I have never shown on this podcast and I think I'm pretty confident this is the only one that I haven't showed up yet so um, maybe we can start with that because here is a circular shawl that I knitted back in 2016 let's see what is the right side I think this is the right side. Look at this. This is Amsterdam. And Amsterdam was a pattern in the first yarn along that Stephen West did from his shop, uh, Stephen and Penelope. It was the first edition in 2016. I was a very new knitter and I decided to, to join in. And this was the third pattern and yarn that came with that. The yarn war is Wollmeise lace, I think. And you uh, you got this giant yarn baby, 300 grams of lace weight yarn, I think 1800 meters to knit this circular shawl with an I-cord bind off. I'm just saying. I mean, once you've done this, uh, you're not, you're no longer, or you never want to do an I-cord again, or you, or anything that comes up next with an I-cord is like potato chippy. So this um, show, I never wear it. I used it as a baby blanket. I just fold it double and then you can drape it over the baby when they're having a nap somewhere. I think that's it's quite useful for that. It is a superwash yarn. The yarn is very nice, very good stitch definition. And the color is yeah a semi-solid. The problem with this project or object is that the 
I didn't weave in my end very well, so there's a hole now. And I should mend it. So I have to do, but this is all I have to <laughs> attach it. Uh, I was a bit overconfident as a new knitter to just snip off and it's, yeah. You start in the middle with, uh, I think it was a uh, like cast on in a magic ring or maybe Judy Becker's magic cast on. I don't know what we did. Yeah, I did a, a ring like with the, the magic ring from crochet instead of crocheting into it, you knit into it. But now I have to make sure that it doesn't unravel any further. So I got it out and decided that I should do that. I have some of this yarn left. But yeah, my one and only pie shawl, as people call it. But it's a double pie because to make a circle you need two pie. I think it's been a long time yeah so uh, my final Stephen West shawl what else yeah I'm wearing something a cardigan it's the Black Force cardigan designed by Verena Kors um, she made this magazine together with Hannah-Lisa Haverkamp it was the first edition of Making Stories, it's called Woods. It was uh, crowdfunded, so I I thought that was a good initiative, fun, so I joined in. I made this Jennifer Steingast pattern from this book, and I'm looking for this pattern now to show you because um, the yarn I chose is not the stitch definition is not very good so the design feature that is actually very cool doesn't really show up very well does it show up in the picture yeah, in this picture it does show up you get uh, it's a fisherman's rib it's a type of brioche and there is a, a slipped stitch detail on the sides. The cardigan is made to be open fronted so without buttons and I did that. I didn't like it. It's not my thing to have it all flapping around so I put on little loops, crochet and use some buttons. And now um, it's very warm because it's knitted in an alpaca wool blend by Drops, Drops Nepal, um, yeah, it's soft and I really like the color because it is uh, deep ocean, I think the color way it is. Um, it's green and blues and it's not a solid. There are, yeah, it's difficult to see I think in this. But you can see all the pills because it's peeling like uh, crazy and here's that detail so I'm I made this into a early 2019 so that is four years ago already I've been knitting for quite some time I started to seriously knit I think in 2016 early 2016 um, and that's when I started doing the the yarn yarn along by Stephen West and uh, his patterns really made me a very confident knitter quickly. So far. This was the section past. Um, no, it was not. Or I sort of have an intermediate section because last week I showed you three things that I had to mend. One thing I didn't touch, that was the snowman that needs to go in the Christmas tree. You know, I have a couple of months left before we put up a tree again we just took it down <laughs> a couple of days ago so i am not in the mood to knit a new uh, carrot nose for the snowman the dog ate it so i didn't do that but the other two projects i did do uh, 
the sweater for my husband with the loops that again the dog snagged um, that was kind of easy to do I took a because it's bulky yarn I took a four millimeter crochet hook and I just made sure that it the stitches were even again and then I soaked the sweater and it was so dirty <laughs> Everything gets so dirty now that we have a dog. <laughs> it's our 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 hand knitted socks. If I wash them, the water is just brown because he brings in all this dust and mud in his coat. And and he has a self cleaning coat, so it cleans and it just deposits all the dirt around the house. And we walk through it, and, and we get dirty feet and dirty socks. Yeah, we do love the dog, and I mean, we just wash. So, um, I, w I washed his sweater, I uh, laid it down to dry, and then as soon as it was dry, he took it, and he was wearing it. So, I don't have it here to show you. I also want to extend the length of this sweater, so that my kid could uh, fit it. I did it, I washed it and he wore it and it needs to be washed again so it, it's a little bit mucky but I can show you that I elongated the sleeves, I just cut off the ribbing, I didn't reuse the yarn because I had plenty of the black yarn um, and so I needed a little bit more of the salmon pink and then added new cuffs. It was easy the because the sweater body was seamed it was a little bit more difficult it had a, a salmon ribbing so I, I think yeah I just cut that ribbing off and used the salmon yarn that I had to knit and pick up in the round but because inside I can show you, it seamed. And then here is the next bit where I did a mock seam to make it match a little bit. And you can see there's some wonkiness there going on. So I didn't do it perfectly. Maybe the other, other side is a little, yeah, the other side is a little bit better. Although you can still see it's wonky and I pulled stitches and, but, that doesn't really matter. This too, there's a mock seam. So I picked up, after cutting off the ribbing, I picked up all the stitches and then I picked up one extra stitch in inside the seam. And that stitch I purled and then I, um, what's, what's it called, the seam? I seamed it. So this is not really a seam, it's a mocked seam, but um, if you pull it, it looks as though there is a seam. And it, there is, it's just also attached. What's that type of seaming called? And it's the nice one that you just do and then you can pull the yarn and then it just closes up. I love that. So, um, yeah, yet again, a skill builder. He now can wear it and I'll throw this in the wash again. And it's cotton yarn, so it's safe to wash. And I'm very happy that it's still, it's being worn. So I'm very uh, glad I chose to do this with a little bit of help from my son, who all of a sudden wants to wear all of his hand knit sweaters. Some of them I cannot just pick up and extend because the armpits are too tight and he still wants to put them on and it's difficult and then his sleeves are up here. I can extend the sleeves, but then it's still like so tight fitting. So I just have to knit him a new sweater. I finished some stuff and you might have seen it. 
I finished my oldest work in progress. And these socks are the Zigzagular socks by Susie White or Susie, yeah, Susie White. In opal yarn, Claude Monet, the purple yarn. And it has a nice zigzag pattern on opposite side of the sock. So you have a left and a right sock. The heel is knitted in, what's the name of the yarn? Shopol Vola Admiral Hanf in the colorway Malakit. And I think that fits very nicely into this sock. I really love the colorway. I enjoyed knitting the colors. I didn't really enjoy the pattern. It's too vanilla for me. I decided I need some patterning all over on a sock. I just, have, yeah, I knit them two up, two at a time, cuff down. I prefer toe up, but I don't know why I did cuff down. I just did. Uh, the pattern is probably cuff down and um, yeah, I did the adjusted heel of partridge with the garter stitch edge, so it's very easy to pick up. That is in the Hermione's Everyday pattern by er Erica Luder, and that is a free pattern that is very famous. This zigzagular pattern is also free and it has a regular heel flap and gusset heel. I did more rows on the heel flap because I find it fits nicer. I do 56 stitches because I have skinny ankles and feet, but I like uh, the extra length uh, for the instep. And I used uh, my favorite cast on for ribbing. Let's see, I will link it in the show notes because it is a very nice cast on for one by one or two by two ribbing. Um, that is not a long tail, so you don't have to measure out your tail. And I really like that. It doesn't flare if I pull them off. Pull one off to show you that. It doesn't flare and it doesn't really matter if it flares for a sock because it would be around your an ankles or uh, calf and no one will see it when you wear it so do you don't need to block socks I don't accept to show them off on the podcast that's the reason I have sock blockers and uh, yeah, it looks so neat nice and then you wear it um, let's see, the cast on is Stretchy Cast On for Ribbing by Tilly Buddy. Uh, so that is an 11 year old video on uh, YouTube that I find myself keep referring back to. So if you are on the lookout for a non long tail stretchy cast on that doesn't flare, you can try this. With them. And I also, because I couldn't put it down, finished this blanket behind me. I don't really feel like getting it. I just want to keep it as a nice back piece. I made it, um, I made 62 color stripes stockinette color stripes and then there are stripes of guard stitch in between. It's the Stephen West pattern, it's the painting waves. So yeah, I've painted some rainbow waves and um, I really uh, enjoyed it. It's my kind of pattern. As I said, this is too boring for me, the heel, uh, not the heel, the leg and the foot because there's just not enough going on. With this, it, it, there's changing of colors going on and yellow was my favorite color. So if I got closer to yellow, then I'm like, yes, I'm almost at yellow. I want to get to the yellow. Oh. The colors were motivating me. The darkest blue was also one of my favorites. And um, you 
change what you do because the garter stitch has three rows that is just knit all the way but then you get to change color and knit one row and then purl one row knit one purl one row and then you do the wavy pattern in the main color so for me that was the light gray and you do garter stitch again and then you go to the next color for stocking it so yeah I just continued and uh, now I want to make a hot pot hot water bottle cover with the yarn that I have left over the final size of the blanket was two meters long and one meter 45 centimeters wide um, but if you pick it up it stretches in width very easily because there's a lot of guard stitch and that stretches sideways so um, yeah it stretches so it's kind of difficult to measure the exact measurements of the blanket because <laughs> but it's definitely wide enough for an adult maybe two to snuggle under and this will be for atlas for when he gets the idea was for when he gets a, um, an adult size single bed because now he is in a, a toddler sized bed and uh, we want to change the room he is in and uh, I thought it would be nice if he has a new blanket because his older blanket he really loves it he still fits under it but it's getting a little bit smallish I'm very proud of this both finished objects but this is really this is my first big blanket I've made baby blankets and a toddler blanket but never a, a proper adult sized blanket and this is not uh, a throw this is a, the size of a bed spread so so now what to do I'll show you what I cast on yesterday I cast on um, the socks that I've mentioned in future knitting before it's the Hipsulaisen Carouselli by Kati Koito it's a free pattern that is an, in, uh, uh, an interesting pattern you start with a hexagon and you knit six sides of the hexagon um, until all of the sides are half of the stop stitches that you usually use for your sock and then you can try it you put your heel in here and then you try to fit it over your instep and you close it up either with a three needle bind off or uh, grafting it with the kitchener stitch so that's interesting and I mentioned I wanted to knit socks like that for Atlas so I picked the yarn that he chose when we were on holiday in Switzerland it's Opal as well it's uh, the Hundertwasser uh, range Hundertwasser is a an artist German artist who never wore two of the same socks so that's very fit thing that they made a, a yarn to celebrate his art this is the one called Regentag of Liebewellen it's with orange and speckles like the pukey or green speckles yellow orange blue red I like it and I really enjoy knitting this I cannot knit two at a time like I prefer to knit my socks but it, there's going to be quite a lot of stitches on the needles and then you seam two of the six hexagon sides together like that and then you can knit your cuff and your toe so uh, once I've seamed it together 
grafted it together. I mean, um, I will knit the other hexagon and do put them, both of them, on the needles to continue two at a time. So that's my plan. But as I was knitting this, I'm thinking, yeah, I would like them for myself. I don't know that my kid actually needs woolen socks. He runs hot. He always has sweaty feet. So he doesn't know I cast this on yet. So I don't know. They might become socks for me. And if I'm feeling generous, I could knit them for my husband. But yeah. It will be his birthday soon. He doesn't know yet, so I could knit those for his birthday. Then I'd have to hurry up, because I have less than a month to finish his sweater, because that's supposed to be a birthday gift as well. Well, I've been knitting a lot, as you can maybe tell, so maybe that's a possibility. This is what I'm knitting on in the past and I'm just uh, in the present and I'm just going with the flow if I want to knit on it I'm gonna knit that and uh, I know for sure that if I pick up the two sweaters that are our are they are our birthday sweaters um, I can finish them both probably in a week if I get cold going um, but it would be nice if I don't have to stress and have a deadline so maybe I just Good. I would like to take you to the next segment uh, that is the future uh, of things that I want to cast on and um, I was speaking about um, what was it? A hot a hot water bottle cover to to go with this blanket. So I looked up free patterns for hot water bottle covers and I selected two to choose from. One is All You Need, a classic by London Leo and it's just a stockinette stitch water bottle cover with a, a ribbing for the top part and I'm thinking about doing that in reverse stocking stitch and then fade the colors that would be nice but there was also a mitered squared hot water bottle cover that is diamond patchwork hottie cover by Heather made and I think that is maybe a little bit more fun for a, a young child so I don't know yet because the gauge on that one is kind of wide and that's fine I can match that gauge with this yarn but I don't want the bottle to show through I would like it. so I'm not sure yet which one I will cast on so here I am uh, still in the same setting but uh, a little later in the afternoon the next thing I want to uh, talk to you about is uh, another sweater from this publication that I would like to knit and uh, I showed you my favorite sweater from this magazine last time it was this beautiful sweater um, with my friend Martina modeling it that was the lemon pie by Paula Pereira but the other one in this uh, publication that I might actually have some stash <laughs> to knit from is the Galine Galine by Giulia Boari the pattern suggests you to to knit it in two strands of Alafos, no, not Alafos, Plutolop. I have three colors from a different sweater that I knitted. I love it. It's, oh, yeah, 
it's oh, it smells so great um, I want to knit from stash so I could use this sweater as an excuse to buy more stash and knit from that stash but I'm trying to be wise and two strands of plutolope somewhat equals alaphoslope and I've got a whole mountain of different colors of alaphos so I'm thinking I could use that and then I would have a stunning cardigan <clears throat> that I could wear when I'm sitting outside knitting there are very different colors used in this blue to rusty and brown and you can see the silhouette silhouette over here so I think that would be a very nice warm and cozy cardigan to knit and I can make it I have mostly blues oh no oh no 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 there goes my mountain my pile of alaphos luckily wool doesn't make a lot of noise when it falls down so I have a lot mostly blues and then some uh, neons and did my favorite color just fall? yes it did this is my favorite it's like a wine red with blue and purple and red flex I knitted a pair of slippers for my father-in-law from this yarn and I combined that with this chartreuse and I'm kind of pissed off that I gave that away because I like <laughs> these colors <laughs> yeah um, but I've got a lot of other colors to work with I've got two greens and a very very boring blue that it's like yeah gray blue I don't really like it I should use it for slippers for someone else for the bottom of the slippers but I've got more blues and a purple These are my wildest colors, I think. And that should be plenty to, if I find a way to arrange it so that I have some pops of color, that would be very nice. Of course, I could also blend in the Plutolope held double. And then I figured, I think I can knit these two hand spuns as well they are two ply just like um, Alaphos is and I would guesstimate that this would knit up as an errand this is um, hand spun with a naturally dyed from a specific sheep this is wool from sheep Annette and this is wool from sheep Nigel so, and then it's naturally dyed so but I don't know if it's kind of offensive to have this <laughs> naturally dyed yarns blend them into a cardigan with <laughs> this that's you know this is just so subtle but I could choose the blue shades and leave the obnoxious neons out of it. Just have a more decent cardigan. So there are a lot of options. And I have another blue. Yeah. 
yeah, left over. So, you know, I think I should knit that because uh, we had some cold, no, not cold. It was actually very nice spring type weather where it was uh, no clouds, sun. It was 12 degrees Celsius, but if you're sitting outside in the sun, it was really nice. And I was sitting outside knitting and the dog really liked that to have a company in the garden. So now he tries to convince me to come into the yard every day, but we're back to normal mucky weather. So I don't sit in the rain to knit. Please give me input below if you think I should match uh, this gorgeously <laughs> colored yarn with a neon pink. Good idea or no? Um, I'm gonna quit while I'm still winning, but you've seen my yarn, you know I have plenty to choose from. There is no reason to buy more yarn. So I'm gonna be good and think about it and knit on the four works in progress that I still have. And hopefully I'll be back soonish, maybe next month. It's gonna be a busy month, so I don't know. But maybe I'll be back next month to show you if I managed to finish our birthday sweaters. And so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, please feel free to like, subscribe and comment down below. Uh, and then yeah, until next time, have a good time.